Hey everybody, welcome to Rock and Roll Shinsu Chu, episode number 56. My name is Gabe Estel, I'm here with Dennis Levi Leach and Jonathan Getz. How's it going, guys? Good. Wonderful. Rock and roll. Excellent. Well, it's glad to be back. Um, got a special episode tonight. Some of you may remember uh, a few episodes we've done, not too many, uh, where we shared uh, baseball cards that were important to us when we were growing up, things that we kind of dusted off from from those collections that are buried in our closets. Um, or our parents. Or our parents. Closets our parents yeah, houses. closets or attics <laughs> or, or, or what have you. Um, so they're cards that we could hunt down from our childhoods. And uh, we shared those with you. We've only done about probably about four or five of them or so. You can find those on. Seven. We've done seven. Seven? Okay. Seven it is. Uh, And in the the real early days, we were kind of throwing them on at the end of some episodes. We were. Yeah, we were doing that. Way way Uh, back machine. And then uh, for others, we we devoted exclusive episodes to those, uh, to just sharing the cards, just kind of sort of shorter episodes. But tonight... Kind of, we don't have a, necessarily a title nailed down for this yet, but it's going to be sort of a special edition of Show Your Cards, a little bit longer, where we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the stories behind all three of us collecting. Um, you know, we're all close to the same age and all grew up in the same area, so we're going to talk a little. And all of us live during the card collecting frenzy of the mid '80s to the early '90s, pre uh, pre bubble. Yeah, pre bubble. I mean, it was the bubble, but pre bubble yeah. first. Yeah, right. yeah, it's like eighty four to ninety three. Yeah, right. And I think a lot of these stories can be pretty universal with our listeners. I think so. Yeah, everybody was collecting cards. It was sort of a, I guess the the closest it's ever been to sort of a national phenomenon was was during that time, um, where everybody was collecting. So we're going to talk about living through that era, uh, what it was like to be a kid collecting during that time. Um, and then I want to remind everybody as well, you can find those Show Your Cards episodes, all seven of them, at uh, rockchew.com. You can also find previous episodes, uh, links to cool things that we've talked about, as well as please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at rockinchew. Okay, and I'll remind everybody of that at the end. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. To give everybody a little bit of context, we're really going to be talking about, as Levi mentioned earlier, um, sort of the, the kind of the golden era of card collecting. While that certainly, you know, kids have been collecting baseball cards, you know, or probably since, you know, certainly our, our parents' generation, maybe even generation before that. But it really didn't become the industry that for a brief period it was until I think all three of us and people our age – really started collecting cards in the period like Levi mentioned from about, you know, you could say anywhere from like the start of it was maybe 84 to 86 all the way to like around 92 or 93, right? Sort of dovetailed with maybe the strike happening in baseball as well. You could say that that was one of the things that, that signaled the end of it too. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And, and uh, part partial credit for the beginning of it kind of goes to Don Mattingly and, yeah, his rookie yeah. cards. Um, right up until that yeah. point, rookie cards weren't quite as heralded. Uh, yeah, until Mattingly in '84. Yeah, right. So yeah, '84 to probably '93-ish, uh, right around there, '94-ish. So almost a ten-year period where really cards uh, consumed a lot of our time when we were kids. They were everywhere. You they anywhere were everywhere. you would Very go with place. your parents, it seemed like there would be a box on the counter, mm-hmm. and and we looked. I we were talking before the show. We looked this up. A pack of 89 tops was 45 cents. Yeah. yeah. And I remember buying a lot of packs of 87 tops so that they might have even have been a quarter or 35 cents. Or yeah. Something. They were in every grocery store. So, yeah, it was something that, like, you could be like, ah, I want that. And your parents would buy it. Right. And you know what I mean? You would get a stick of awful tasting gum covered yeah. in powdered sugar. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. yeah it, it was just something that was a lot more innocent. Yeah, yeah, and, so, and something that made it so ubiquitous was the fact that these other companies, Fleer and Don Russ, were able to come in yeah. uh, before even Upper Deck and and start to um, really just uh, be uh, uh, flood the market with all types of cards in addition to Tops because Tops lost its monopoly on on releasing those cards. So 
Yeah, and now it's now it's back to like where it started with just yeah. tops. Yeah. yeah, so it's come full circle now. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so you know, all of us just to give everybody, um, the folks who who don't know us, um, personally, uh, all of us are just separated by you know one year each. So you're looking at seventy nine, eighty, and eighty one for our birth years. So we were all collecting cards right around the same era. Um, since I'm the eldest here, I'll go ahead and start. Um, you know, I was looking through my older car, my, well, I should say they're all older, uh, my cards, and the year that, and I don't have the clearest memory of starting, just because I was so young. Yeah. Uh, I remember, you know, the throes of collecting pretty vividly, but I don't necessarily remember, like, you know, here's here's your introduction to baseball cards, Gabe. I don't remember if like, you know, my dad brought home a pack or my grandpa gave me a pack or my uncle gave me a pack. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm looking at the collection and 1986 tops, um, which are a set that I really like still. Those were those that had to have been just based on the volume of cards that I own from that year. That had to have been really my foray my first foray into into co- collecting cards seriously. So I'd have been about seven, I'd have been seven years old, right? Um, and uh, if, for those of you who, you know, I, gosh, I should, I should have one handy here, but I don't. Um, the 86 tops sort of had the all caps, there you go, right? The Bojack. This is tops uh, traded, but. That yeah, will, tops, that beautiful card. Oh, gosh, oh, yeah, I, you know, I, I got that one. I haven't one. seen that great. one in a long time, man. Of course. It's, it's a beaut, yeah. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, the all caps. Yeah, the Bo Jackson, it, by the way, for the, our listeners. Yep, all <laughs> caps in the team, the font, you know, all caps in the team color. Um, just actually all caps on all the text on the front, I think. Oh, the um, back, and a, yeah. a big photo, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I like that. And then, uh, yeah, those are the backs there. So. That was my that was my first first uh, really foray into collecting cards. Series. And what's funny is like even at that time, if you you know it got it got to where you know almost nowadays, and it started to when we were getting out of collecting, to where it was just becoming so much of an adult thing. Yeah, the, the cards were so expensive. It, it kids couldn't afford to go to a store and buy a pack. Usually, you know what I mean. They'd have to work for a while to spend. You know, right. their money packs of cards, or and it became all about inserts. And what's funny is those '86 tops. Even if you wanted to be kind of a, a big collector, you could back then. You because could. They yeah. released those tops Tiffany sets. Do you remember those? They were, they were like tops released like in parallel with all those sets back then. A set where they were like on glossy premium card yeah. stock. I know what you're talking about. And they were yeah. called Tops Tiffany. And those are actually worth some money still. Okay. One of the few, huh? Yeah, yeah. right. I yeah. wish I would have known just to collect those. Right. So, so yeah, 86 marked the beginning of my card collecting, um, you know, my, my golden years of card collecting, and probably, you know, near the beginning of the golden years of the collecting industry. Um, you know, I took my cards everywhere. Yeah. Like, I, I, I took them everywhere. I mean, I I take them to the toilet. You know what I mean? Like I I I look at my cards while I was on the bed, while I was sitting on the toilet. Yeah, we like, should preface that everybody had a binder, right? Yeah, everybody, right. Everybody yeah, had yeah. a binder. Yeah. Maybe with stickers even on mine, it. Mine has multiple layers of stickers. Like it, <laughs> yeah. it starts with I don't know, I think that's Howard Johnson or something. Um, and then uh, yeah, it comes in like ninety two upper deck. I think uh, Prince Fielder with the uh, San Diego chicken there. Nice, um, and then it's recently recently been repaired with some Hello Kitty duct tape. Uh, right, the last few years, keep it alive. So it, yeah. it, you know, it started out maybe just you put them in a box, and then the binders became in vogue. Oh, uh, yeah. you know, as, as collecting became more serious Ages. for a lot of people. Yes. Yeah, so binders, right? You know, nine uh, nine slots per page, right? Do you remember when you did you uh, upgrade from the side load slot to the top load slots? I remember when I finally got top load slots for those I, pages. Yeah, I, I barely like remember I the slide, them. the sides. Yeah, yeah, the sides didn't last long. People were no. like, "He's out of here." Yeah, and then you, you guys remember as well putting them in the in the. Um, you didn't want to double up, right? You thought that hurt the card. You know <laughs> you what did, I mean? Yeah, you You're didn't like, want yeah. too many cards in in one. And your good ones, unless like you really were pressed for space, you didn't want them back to back either. <laughs> right, 
Right. Because you couldn't see the backs. Couldn't read you couldn't the backs. see the backs. Yeah, yeah, you would have to take them out. Oh. Taking them out wears them down. Oh, yes. Right? I don't want to bend those quarters. I wasn't yeah. as concerned about that. Uh, unless I put them in a, in a hard case. In, in which case, I mean, those were the real valuable ones. But otherwise, yeah, if they were Like a top back, loader or like a little sleeve? Yeah, whatever, I have, whatever yeah. these are. Yeah, yeah I have like a top good loader. book. Okay. I had like a good book and a swag book. You know what I mean? <laughs> where like, where like I, um, I would have, um, you know, my the ones where yeah. I, I didn't have yeah. them back to back. Like all my favorite players, wow. like the ones that at the time were worth money. And then I had a book that was like more. It wasn't commons, but it was sort of like a mid tier between yeah. the the good cards <laughs> and the commons. Where I would double up those if I had doubles of the card. And put some. That, of that was the binder you would let kids see first when you were like, "Hey, you want to trade?" Exactly. Yeah. Then you know, because yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Because like one of my books, I was. I remember I went over to a kid's house, and I, I'm not going to name any names because these names won't mean anything to the audience. But and like you know, he busted out his book, and I busted out mine. And like I was pretty stingy with what I would trade. <laughs> And, like, he just starts pulling out all these cards. You know what I mean? Like, all, like... Your cards like, or his cards? M- my cards. He's like, like ah, these are all books, going like, home what with you me. Want? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like a first date here, okay? Like, <laughs> like seriously, like, let's Get your not, greasy like, hands dude, off my cards. Yeah, dinner and a movie first, okay? <laughs> seriously. Like, he, like, pulled out, like, you know, like, three dozen cards. I was like, nah, like, I got veto power here. Like, this ain't... You know, so, you know, I was I was very uh, selective and, and kind of stingy with what I traded. Um, but, yeah, going back, I would take my cards everywhere. Like, like my parents would drive to, you know, Springfield, which for those of you who aren't from where we're from, that was kind of like where we went for, you know, civilization. Um, relatives, and, houses. Right. Re- like yeah, that. right. Relatives, houses and, and, and things like that. And, um, we, uh, um, you know, it was like 25 miles away and like, yeah, we would, you know, every time my my mom would take me shop, my mom and dad would take me shopping. Like I would take the book, you know, I would take it to family functions, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. Some of my first car trading experiences were with you probably at a holiday function. Absolutely. And, and, And our, um, and our other cousin, Justin, I remember trading cards with him as well. He was he was a big player in in our uh, our our family circle of of card trading as well. I remember, um, and I'll pass the baton here in a minute. Um, I remember Justin uh, Levi and I's cousin. Um, he uh, he was the first person to show me Upper Deck, which changed everything. <laughs> you, were like, you know, oh, it was just if you have those moments where. You know, this, this podcast is about baseball and music. Do you know I, what, like, I, equivalent, I, I, like, kids would, maybe if you could somehow compare, it would be, like, black and white TV to color. It would. It be. was like you had been in black and white your whole life. It's the Wizard you, of Oz. Yeah, yeah, you were like, what? <laughs> Nothing will be the same afterwards, <laughs> Nothing, you know? I remember, like, when I first heard Appetite for Destruction, and then... <clears throat> Bless you. Excuse me. Yikes. Um, and then I first heard Straight Outta Compton a couple of years later, right? Things were never the same after that, right? And it was the same thing for Upper Deck. My cousin Justin showed me these glossy cards, and, um, you know, they had pictures on the big pictures on the back as well. Holograms. And they were just, yeah, they were just on, like, really nice stock as well. And they this were just the 91 Bo Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, 89 Dude, nothing, was the first year of Upper nothing Deck. Nothing like the smell of a fresh pack of yeah. Upper Deck. Man. Yeah, absolutely. And they were expensive at the time. <laughs> You know, like Levi had said, most of the other brands were anywhere from like 45 to 65 cents. They were like a buck or a buck and a half. These are like a buck or a buck and a quarter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, they uh, they were kind of this kind of game a game changer. For sure. Yeah, they were game changers and also sort of a cliche here. They were kind of the beginning of the end, too. Yeah. You know, at, yeah. At upper deck. Yeah, it was Upper Deck and then like Leaf as well, Stadium Club, Studio. All those came in. And then it was just a shit storm after yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So we, well, yeah. Uh, that, and so that kind of goes straight in. It got oh. to that point where trading cards were so big that they would make them for almost anything. Yeah. Oh, we were, I was going through some of the, the vintage tops wax packs from back in the day. And there, there were adventures in babysitting tops cards. There, <laughs> nice. there were, awesome. uh, there were Lost Boys tops cards. 
I have a uh, a sticker, an Alf card sticker on the on the side of one of my shoe boxes of baseball. I'll cards. never forget. I I remember. I might have even bought a pack of these, the Desert Storm cards, the tops. I, I had. Storm I remember those. Yeah. I remember those. Oh, yeah. Ninety. Didn't didn't they put some in like ninety ninety one tops? Didn't they yeah. put Desert Storm cards in there? There might. Yeah, you're right. I think there might have been. They were like gold yeah, foil. Yeah, been inserts. Yeah. Looks like there were Growing Pains tops cards. No, yeah, if just... it was if it was a part of pop culture, most likely. Yeah, turned Gremlins into, you know, 1 and 2 both had cards. I've got a lot of the Gremlins cards. Um, yeah, I just think that it, it... Like, if you can be one of those people and ride that wave, you know what I mean? It was such a huge market Yeah, that anything could sell. But it, it, it almost... You know what I mean? It almost should have been a sign to everybody that it was going to end. It was going to it... crash. To illustrate how big it was, lastly, um, you know, we all grew up, well, Levi in a neighboring town, but all of us grew up in towns of under 10,000 people. And the town that Jonathan and I grew up in had fewer than 30,000 people in it. Or, I'm sorry. No, 3, yeah, definitely 3,000. Right. Um, had fewer than 3,000 people in it. Um, and we had like three card shops at one yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, I remember you know, walking with you. Yeah, and I'm, I interrupted you, Jonathan. I'm sorry. What were you no, that's say? okay. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, and I would always hang out uh, at Merle's. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the guys there I'd hang out with, we would we, uh, we would go play uh, baseball at the middle school, and then we would just go back. I'd ride my Sonic 6 uh, dirt bike, and uh, we'd go back to the card shop. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was all cards all the time there for a couple summers. And uh, I remember one of the, one of the first like valuable cards, even before the card shops, um, was uh, an '86 uh, uh, Jose Canseco rookie. And this is it's one of his more obscure rookies. It's not like the sought, most sought after. Oh, but, but it's a good looking card. Yeah, it's got the batting practice clear. jersey on. Him. Yeah, That's... yeah, with uh, Eric Plunk on there, <laughs> and uh, awful name for a pitcher, Eric Plunk. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, so yeah, and I even I even put it in a little. Uh, uh, top loader, as Levi called it, with rookie right. card. Yeah, what, okay, hats. like, if you want full geekdom here, if you want me to go full-on nerd, that card is in a penny sleeve inside a top loader. Oh, you you can see the little plastic? Yeah, that's yeah. a that's called a penny sleeve. Penny yeah. sleeve. Just look, did, seeking the that. ultimate preservation there. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when oh, you, want, oh, when yeah. you only want the finest for your worthless memorabilia. Uh, right. Yeah, especially when it has pretty <laughs> bent-up cor- nicked corners and everything first card i remember trading for uh was i remember taking my binder over to a kid's house don't even remember who it was but uh i ended up obtaining a 1987 tops will clark it's a good looking card and it's um yeah the 87 tops are are pretty uh are, are, are standard pretty, bearer really standard bearer yeah for when it comes yeah. to you know some of the most pleasing designs iconic and, yeah i will say like who the photographer that year or the photographer's a lot of out of focus shots. Yeah, like a yeah. lot of little haze, yeah. long zooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, a lot of a lot of haze on some of those. Shots. And you know, and that's something else. Upper deck brought to the game was sharp, more crisp. sharp action shots, uh, more casual shots too. You know, upper deck would have those. As yeah, well. they were casual but not boring. There are a lot of right. shots of those tops in the mid '80s where it's just like you know, it's short of the dude picking his nose. They're pretty boring. Right. right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But then you, it, it starts to uh, get a little bit better. Uh, and you know, even in '88, you know, it's something uh, something like the Greg Jeffries rookie of the '88 down Russ. It's, it's you know, it's a nice shot. Um, and. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, some of that, some of that early stuff, even the Cal Ripken rookie is, it, it's yeah, the, not, the, not the photos. Focus. Yeah. The, like the photos and the quality of the colors, like, right. like everything is like, wow, you go back and look and it's like, these cards were worth a lot of money at one time too. Yeah. You know? I would, I would yeah. say that 86 top set that I mentioned, the photo quality was, it's it's, bad. It was different it's not, for yeah. you know it was it was a marked improvement one of the worst the sets is year the year yeah the worst set probably for that type is 85 tops seems yeah. like 85 tops every card the colors are washed out yeah it seems that's like, the card i was just gonna bring yeah. that was on the tip of my yeah. tongue the clemens yeah. rookie yeah 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 Nice. That's a that's a good card. That's that one does not suffer as bad as some of the right, other yeah, cards. Yeah, one's not as bad. But you're right. So eighty five really wasn't good. Eighty six was a it was a pretty good set for for photos. Eighty and eighty seven was 
it was a nice design, but it was a step back in photos. Yeah, yeah, I right. agree. Yeah, and then eighty eights weren't those. That was a pretty forgettable year for tops. It was, but eighty nine was. Eighty nines are nice. great. Yeah, good photos and good design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bubble stars. letters, kind of the yeah. cursive bubble letters, almost. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. say eighty eight or eighty nine was probably when the 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 apex of me having a lot of cards. Eighty nine for me. Yeah. Probably eighty nine for me because that also was the first year that I was old enough and the Cubs had won the division that year. Yeah. So oh, I right. remember yeah. the Mark the the eighty nine Mark Grace Tops is a great looking card. Beautiful card. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not his rookie. It's like it's like first year, second. Yeah. Yeah. Year. Technically, there was an eighty eight maybe traded. Yeah. That was I, the I, thing. All these sets, there would be like, most of them would be a set. Then it got to be there was a high, a low set and a high set. Then it got yeah. to be there was a low set, a high set, and at the end of the year, an update or a traded. Yeah. So it, to try, you know, with a kid with limited funds, I I hardly ever got traded or update sets. And I thought of this as well. You know, you mentioned kids with limited funds, right? Um, you know, it. Levi, I think, alluded to this earlier. I mean, adults came in and, like, they, you know, they sort of, they t- they turned it into an industry. They monetized but, it. Yeah, they monetized it and also, you know, I mean, they would, they would, I, I remember going to a couple of card shows. I don't know if you guys ever made it to card yep. shows. Levi I, I, probably I mean, attended a couple I, of them yeah. together. Yeah. It was at the, ho- the old Holiday Inn in Springfield, one of yeah. them. And, um, you know, I mean, like, there would be adults there essentially like shortchanging kids you know oh, like, yeah yeah like yeah off. like just like a guy sitting there ripping open like wax packs looking for like the best cards and then trying to sell you like commons and uncommons for like way more than what they were worth or if he did have the good cards he would have them like you know the prices would be jacked. so marked up yeah. yeah so it became adults selling to adults then yeah. um and yeah, some of the innocence was gone. Yeah. I would say w- w- the, the shop I went to the most was obviously one you guys probably did too as well was BJ Coin Shop in Springfield. Oh yeah, and they seemed to be the place to where you could buy buy packs of cards for a decent price. Obviously, you know there wasn't much markup, if any, and then individual cards they they had some. They had a lot of autographed photos. I remember that. They had, like, binders full of autographed 8x10s. They had one of the Mantle rookie cards there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they did. They had older uh, older cards there. Which I'm talking, was... like, the you guys know what card yeah. I'm talking about, the fucking oh, yeah. famous card. The 52 yeah. tops. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, they had one of those. That's another sure. interesting point, and I remember I remember that year they brought back Bowman in 89. Yeah. And, uh, the they were long. Sets. They yeah, were long. They, they, they wouldn't the fit in the top yeah, load. Yeah, that's my top only time to get those is You couldn't put them in the top row. Yeah. And there was a, a set called Tops Big. Do you remember those? They wouldn't yeah. fit. Yeah. They, they were like big. a little bit bigger, too. Right. And uh, the 89 Tops Griffey is an awesome card. But yeah. I remember they would put those like, oh, hey, you could win. You could win like a, a real Bowman or a real, you know, a Mickey Mantle. There would be those cards in there. Do sure. you remember that? It would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, I thought for sure i was gonna somehow pull like an original mickey mantle card out of a pack of bowman but it never happened (laughs) let's talk for a minute guys about we talked about upper deck coming on bursting onto the scene in 89 the transition from the 80s to the 90s um you know there became too many options to really keep up with right yeah Uh, 92 93 94 yeah yeah, I mean, even sort of, I was looking through some older cards, it sort of even started, like, around 91, 92. Like, you had score. a lot of, yeah, well, well, score came around in the 80s, but I'm saying, like, special editions of, of oh. cards. You know what Clear I mean? Like, player. Yeah, like, ones that um, weren't necessarily just the standard player card. You know what I mean? They would, they would either be... Um, like a you know a special edition that they had created like some type of special insert some of those were really pretty and cool um others it just became hard to keep up with you would see like cards where you know like these studio and pinnacle and all these other kind of cards like randy like, johnson in a tuxedo holding a fastball exactly it was always like it was always <laughs> like them out of uniform you know yeah. like I remember there's one where like Frank Viola like looks like he's like a Broadway director. He's got like, a black <laughs> pearl neck on, you know. He's like, like this, you know. Like, he, he actually, like, like Frank Frank Viola like 
directing Streetcar Named Desire or something. You know, like, he was listening to uh, Simon and Garfunkel bookends. That or it. that, yeah. Attack of Pentacle got me in a lot of trouble one time. I it was, uh, you know, I was going through a pretty rough patch there when I was about twelve, and I was pretty addicted to, to buying cards. Yeah. And uh, we have a festival there in Petersburg every year, and and I remember asking my parents for some, my mom for some money, and she's like, okay. But you can't go spend it on cards. You have to go spend it <laughs> at, at the, the carnival. <laughs> yeah, at the carnival. You know, you, you better buy like a pretzel or a funnel cake with this money. And but I immediately went to the card shop and I just had to buy something. Like give me, give, dude, give me the pinnacle. Give me the pinnacle. And were so, these the black border pinnacles? Yeah, I remember I think they so, were. Yeah. Which and, the design uh, on all those cards suck now. When you look oh, back God, at them, they look awful. really dated yeah, yeah. and just yeah, they look yeah. like a pair of LA Gear sneakers turned into baseball cards. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and, go ahead. So I, I left them in my jacket pocket. My mom found them, and she said, where'd you get these? And I said, somebody gave them to me, <laughs> right. which is an awful lie. I just hold them for a friend. And that was right. when I realized, yeah, I had a problem. They're but, not my cards, officer. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was, I was 12. I realized I had a problem, and that was that was kind of the beginning of the end, actually, for me buying cards was 1992, 12 years old. <laughs> do you guys, do you guys, I mean, okay, you tell that. Levi, what about you? Do you remember what made you stop? Was it just age or was it just... I think age, I got out of it. I got more into music and I started Same. playing music. Music and girls. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. Um, but honestly, like every once in a while, like I know I have a few, like I would randomly buy a pack. Like I have some, like a couple, probably a few packs worth of like 94 tops maybe. Mm -hmm. I have maybe some like 97 tops, a couple right. packs worth like i would occasionally check in on the hobby so to speak but like i i just i lost it you know what i mean at one time i don't know you guys might have too i had the monthly beckett subscription oh yeah, yeah. i had a subscription that was yeah. that was like a, a playboy a for like a, a 12 year old that was like <laughs> <What's> yeah. <playboy? laughs> yeah, right <laughs> I uh, I had it got too. it in I, the I, mail all in like a wrapper was like oh don't let nobody see this I remember <laughs> like the the demand was so high for it like I didn't get the Bo Jackson one where he's you know the black Superman, and white Superman I got that pads. one like oh, yeah. they had to send it to me like my mom called and Holy stuff cow. like that yeah my mom called Beckett you know she's like, like you jet my son yeah right so like about a couple of weeks later I got like in like a special like first class mail. Do you rem I remember a, a Bo Jackson one where he's dressed like Superman, like coming out of a telephone booth. I remember that one as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, then Beckett would explode to where they had, you know, they had like a hockey Beckett monthly. Yeah. They had oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Um, you know, and they I think... were like basically the first collectible that blew up. Yeah. People people had always collected stuff, whether it was antiques or dolls or this was something that was like geared towards kids and just blew up it, it was, was almost like, babies before Beanie yeah babies. yeah i was gonna say that. yeah it, it was exactly <laughs> another another one that totally yeah. you know just fell off a cliff after yeah. a while you know you know the beckett separated the kids that like knew their shit for them <laughs> oh, yeah yeah because like the kids that didn't read Beckett or consult it, like were kind of easy to rip off. You know what I mean? Like, whereas the kids who Dude, read it, you know, you wanted, like, uh, yeah. couldn't get it past them. You I know? read Beckett, and I knew I was getting a bad deal. But maybe part of me somehow saw into the future, and I time traveled and saw that it would someday be worth nothing. But I'll never forget. I remember trading a kid at daycare in Chatham. Um, he traded me an eighty-seven tops. Andre Dawson, or it was 88 tops Andre Dawson MVP because he was MVP in right. 87, I think it was. And it's just it's just a face shot of him, I think. It's like his head says, you know, MVP or whatnot. I traded it for the 86 tops Mark McGuire rookie card. Ooh. Back then, it would have been, you know what I mean? Back then, it was like, oh my God, I'm. That's the Coup. worst deal you could have ever that's, made. That's the difference life. between a state college and a private college back then. Right. <laughs> Nowadays, it's like both cards are literally worth nothing. Yeah. 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 And so do you guys have any white whales that, that you were never able to get? For me, 90 Leaf Frank Thomas. I, I never pulled one of those. I those always were... wanted one of those. And an 84 Fleer Roger Clemens were, were my two white whales. Uh, yeah, those got. 84 Fleer updates are tough to get. Oh, yeah. I, I they never had the Griffey upper deck, you know, oh, like, you I mean, this, yeah, I never got like, it. Like, in later years, I went back and bought, I I bought a Conseco rookie for, like, next to nothing. 
I yeah. bought that Maguire rookie again for nothing. I bought. Um, Don't you feel kind of validated when you can like just get it for like seven bucks? Yeah. Well, not yeah. I. I literally think I paid like four dollars for nice. shipping or something nice. for the Maguire because yeah. it was right after all that fallout and everything. The cards were just worth nothing. They yeah. still they still haven't rebounded a ton. No, you know what I mean? no, no, no. No Jose Canseco rookie card is worth over five dollars or something yeah and like you know i mentioned i didn't have during the my golden years of collecting i didn't have uh any of those the ken griffey jr 89 upper deck now it's like i could get six of them if i wanted to you know yeah. i mean and part of you kind of wants to <laughs> kind of does yeah oh, yeah, yeah. kind of does you know w- one last thing about beckett monthly um beckett was always good at it was kind of my um my information for on prospects you know like beckett was really good at identifying the cards that were going to be high so the kids that didn't read beckett like they didn't know who todd man oh yeah i I remember you know what i mean column it was like a column or something every month and it was like hot or not yeah and like like cards that are going up cards that are going down so you could you could essentially like you know you, you could you could pull one over on some people because they didn't know who Greg Jeffries was. They didn't know who Todd Van Poppel was. They didn't know who Brian Gordon or uh, Brian Taylor was, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, right. So, so yeah, you could really, you could, uh, you could exploit um, that. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say it, but you yeah. could. Yeah. So who, who, who were your go-to players? Who, who'd you collect the most of? Van Poppel for me. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, just because I, I, I got it, I was infatuated with the prospect, you know, like yeah. what could be, yeah. Mine originally was always Sandberg, like any yeah. Ryan Sandberg card I could get my hands on. Sure. And yeah. then um, about maybe two years or a year before the Ripken rookie or record got broke, maybe like two years before that, yeah, I got into Ripken and started collecting all of his cards. Sure. So I probably have... I probably have equal amount Sandberg and Ripken. Yeah. The Van Poppel for me was excluding White Sox. You know, obviously. Oh, like, sure. I went after Fisk. Fisk, Fisk and Baines in the 80s. And A lot then, of big pins. Yeah. And then the early 90s, you know, um, Thomas and Ventura. Um, so, yeah. 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 I had I had way too many Ellis Burks and Mike Greenwells. I was a big Red you, Sox fan. Yeah. yeah Did you end up having ever that Leaf Sosa rookie? No. Gabe on the white side. I don't have it. No, I know what you're talking. It's a good looking card. He's bunting like a, in it, isn't he? Uh, yeah, or like tops, a I got his tops rookie on the White Sox. I've got that one. Um, but yeah, not the. Uh, I've got the tops one where I think he's he's either in. I think he's in the minor league uniform still. So yeah, I, I mean, no, it yeah. seems like you know it. What turned from an innocent hobby, it kind of turned into a doomed doomed proposition almost yeah, yeah. like it, it was it was it was so big it had to fail you know what i mean yeah absolutely yeah uh too much and, and it now fun, it's though. and I now mean, it's back just in i mean you, you can buy, you can yeah. buy a pack of cards for a dollar 99 we were talking like you know at a target or a walmart you can buy i think you get what like eight or 12 cards maybe for a dollar 99 yeah but there's so many other sets that it's all it's all about more expensive sets and it's all about i mean and one of the things that's made it cool but one of the things that's made it worse and what turned it worse was the introduction of of relic inserts or autograph inserts and so like they they introduced that that to like spice up the hobby you know where it's like a patch or an autograph or whatever or a piece of the bat yeah but what that's created is more adults rummaging through cases and cases of cards trying to find those cards and there are scrupulous ways to do it you can weigh packs you can weigh boxes of cards right. and tell by weight what if a pack has a certain insert well do you remember uh, back in the day i would you could look in this on the side to see oh. because like sometimes there would be like a glossy something or other uh, it, where you could see through the pack to see if there were darker packs. do you remember rack packs cards? The clear rack packs. We would yeah. go to Kmart, yeah. I think it was. Oh, and yeah, all yeah. those rack packs, you could thumb through them and find like rookie cards or whatnot on the outside that you yeah. could see. Well, it, and Merle's, I think he would even he would give you the box and be like, "All right, pick your pack," and he would like let you look in the sides to try to figure out you know which pack exactly well, you and wanted. The the more unscrupulous dealers back in those days, um, 
when they were wax packs, all you had to do was open the pack of cards, look for the good cards, yeah. find them, take them out, put one in, and then reseal it with an iron. Yeah, they, they they used to do that. Yeah, bastards. But yeah, you know, Robin, is... and like Gabe said, it it got to a point where they're robbing kids. You know what I mean? The hobby turned from being something yeah. like, hey, hey, this is cool. Kids can collect this. Kids can be into baseball. Now it's adults have monetized it. They've made like a, a I'm not going to say a criminal activity, but it kind of is a criminal activity to, to open cards, take out the good ones, then reseal them and sell them. To, to, oh, yeah. To look yeah, 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 it's fraudulent. But yeah, I, I think in the end we, we had it pretty good considering oh, yeah. that we, we were in this era uh, that we, where we got to collect uh, at this, this this kind of pinnacle, and yeah. and then it's there's nothing right. now that like unifies kids like that. No, but it's yeah. se- for us it segued like right into music, and it was just perfect timing, you know, because sure. come 90, 1991, 1992, it was perfect timing. Yeah, it's true. All right, let's show our cards, guys. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Jonathan, why don't you start us off? I'm I'm doing I'm going with the classic. This is a big influence on us. Uh, and it is the 90, 1987 Tops, Future Stars, Bo Jackson. You might recognize that logo. It uh, uh, We have mimicked it for the Rock and Roll Shinsu Chu logo. And, uh, yeah, Bo's, Bo's just shagging a fly here in this 1987 Tops. Important card for many people our age. Yeah, that was one maybe that could have been a white whale for me. I don't know if I ever had one of those no, back dude. in the day, but I... I acquired yeah, one of the like I bought a lot on eBay, and the guy had the tops traded and that eighty seven. I think I paid like six dollars for that. Yeah. Um, the card I was going to show, I just pulled a day or so ago in a pack, and I I had talked about this a little bit before the episode. Um, I bought a pack of the new Tops Gypsy Queen. It's twenty sixteen Tops Gypsy Queen, and that's a subset of Tops where it's a little bit fancier looking cards. And in this year, they've used that new photo effect that's really popular everywhere, where it's like a photo that kind of makes it look like a painting or a drawing or whatever you want to say. Okay. And it, it really works well on baseball cards. I, I like yeah. this photo effect on baseball cards. And um, one little disclaimer, it was three packs of cards, and each pack had six cards. So eighteen cards, and it was nine ninety nine. Jesus. So that ob- obviously it is not a kid's hobby, or the you know what I mean. These aren't geared towards children. They can't be. Um, yeah, and I don't think this. Unfortunately, most kids they don't give a shit about them anyway. Exactly. So, yeah. Most kids don't even unfortunately care about baseball, but that's another right. episode we'll have to do. Um, I pulled the little mini Cubs Jason Hayward. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. And I have mixed feelings about these mini cards that they've reintroduced. I don't know if I if I'm if I'm all the way on board. I I know it's supposed to harken back to like tobacco days, maybe. Yeah. But um, Who I don't know. Like to harken back to tobacco, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, right. I was just trying. I was just harkening back to tobacco days the other day. <laughs> yeah, just, Levi, it, I just feel Levi like was, ripped Levi off. Was I was sucking on a Pall Mall as he was. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's like well, and so what's funny. They uh eighty nine Fleer the Randy the original Randy Johnson rookie card on eighty nine Fleer, he's in he's standing and behind him he's he's um the Expos they're they're what at the what's it what was it uh, Exposition, Olympic Dome the Olympic yeah. Dome yeah behind him on the board it's like Marlboro literally like right here's his head and right next to it it says Marlboro sure well Fleer didn't realize it and they let it go and so they ended up reprinting a ton of those. And like it, you know, they had a lot of they had a lot of problems in that '89 Fleer set. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it it happens. yeah, yeah. Just ask Billy Ripken. Anyway, <laughs> or no, was that '88? No, that, that was '89. '89. Okay. All right. Well, I've got. Speaking of 1989 Fleers, um, not the best looking cards. You know, it's just that gray and white stripes. Yeah. But. Um, I always liked the cards that had multiple players on them, and they, they'd done this for a while, like probably back since the 60s and 70s at least. Um, I've got one here called Triple A's, yeah. right? And it's basically Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco dwarfing Terry Steinbach, <laughs> right? Um, like three of him. Right. Actually, it looks like McGuire is two of him and Canseco is three of him. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, you know, 
for a brief period there, um, when the White Sox weren't very good, you know, I grew up a White Sox fan, as everyone knows, um, and I've always rooted for them. For a brief period there, much to my grandfather's dismay, like I like the A's because it was well, yeah. sexy. It was sexy to a like. Lot of people yeah, they were yeah. they were they were the the Lamborghini pick. You know? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I mean, obviously these three guys, Conseco particularly, played a role in that. You know, they were. <laughs> I mean, like everybody wanted to root for the team that was kicking everybody's ass. You know, sure. I mean, <laughs> so, both not everybody kids. wanted to root for him, but all the kids liked them. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, like Conseco and McGuire. You know, I mean, there's. Everybody wanted those two guys on their team, you know? I mean, who oh, yeah. didn't? So, did, for me, did, yeah. This is uh, Steinbach is the also ran on there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. did, he had some good years, man. Um, yeah, he was... Go did ahead. Both, yeah. did, did both Canseco brothers play for the White Sox at some point in their careers? I don't know if Ozzy did. Jose did in 01. Like, I think we were his last team. I think we might have been his last stop, actually. Yeah, so... Yeah. So yeah, we the White Sox get all those guys just when they're <laughs> when they're way past their prime. Yeah, unfortunately, it's about eight years late. Right? Yeah, right, exactly. So, uh, so anyway, um, yeah, no, Oz, Ozzy never played for the White Sox. Okay, it's just uh, the A's and the Cardinals. Triple A's. So those are mine. Nice. All right, superstar specials. This series just generic. <laughs> you said it was an '89 flare. 89 Fleer. Yeah. yeah, and there's kind of like a narrative on the back about all three players. So, anywho, that was fun. Yeah. Um, so, want to remind everybody, check us out at rockchew.com. Um, you can find previous episodes, all the Show Your Cards episodes, uh, as well as our most recent episode where we profiled the work of Bob Dylan. Um, so check that out, please. Also, please, if you listen to us on iTunes or you subscribe to us on iTunes, go ahead and please leave us a rating there. Even if it's not a good rating, leave us a rating. Tell us what we're doing wrong, right? We'll take any rating. So, uh, and reviews as well. That helps us out, certainly. Um, and however you listen to us, if you, if there are other apps where you can rate us, please do, if you can. Just take a second and we would appreciate it. Um, and then also, uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Rock in Chew. That's in as in Nolan Ryan beat up Robin Ventura. Um, so check us out at Rock in Chew on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and until next time, we'll see you later. Have a good night, everybody. Peace.